going, going, going live. <laughs> did you enjoy that? Did it was marvelous for a Sunday afternoon. Absolutely marvelous. Yay, love it. I love how it connects us, and then it says we've been connected for eight seconds, ten seconds, or whatever, but it's only just gone through. So I could swear or all sorts. You know, we don't have a Davina McCall telling us you are now live. Please do not swear. No, there's there's none of those little hints at all. <sighs> Shocking. I could get into all sorts of trouble. So I'll just open another window. Oh, it says we're live in the group. Yeah, I can see it. Uh, so let's open another one. There we are. Are we there? Yeah, just so you know, the rush of comments of the thousands of viewers as they pile on. <laughs> Possibly so what, in the millions. What, what, what are we wearing? It's beautiful. Oh, so uh, today's, today's outfit. Oh, yes. Styled um, by. Is the, can you see the beads and things? Yes, they're beautiful. It is the Garden Pond Shawl. Um, yes. The lady that designed it is called Patricia something, whose name I've forgotten. But in my project, it's one of my earlier shawls. Um, I mean, it's it's joyous. Um, I'll have to check what the yarn is. Garden pond. The colours. It just reminded me of uh, Monet's garden at Giverny. Yeah. Uh, Patricia Martin. Right, it's the lady. Um, do you want to see a close up? I'll show you a yeah. share on screen. Definitely shares these. Where we are. So, can you see? Oh, wow, variation of colors. It's got a lot more pink in it in that color than uh, sorry, in that picture than it looks on the actual camera at the it's minute. Very jewel like. Um and I got those sort of Aurora beads. Can you see the beads? Yeah, they're like iridescent, aren't they? Yeah, that was the... they remind me of do you know when you have um some petrol that's spilled on the floor mm. and you can see all the colours glistening, that's what they look like to me. Yeah, so in bright sunlight you see more of the pinky shades. Yeah. On a dull day like today, it's more like that picture. Yeah, on the on the camera for me, it looks more blues and greens. Yeah. But on those pictures, when you share the screen, you can see the pink a lot more, can't you? It's just incredible depth of colour. Um, but yeah, it really, really made me think of Monet's garden and it's already yeah. a Ranco sock. It's the first time I'd ever used it. And the colour is 2405. It's beautiful. I just completely I do, loved it. I've not used that particular, that Ranco sock, but I have used, um, is it the Botania lace or Botanic lace or something along those lines that they make? Oh, yeah. Um, you know the one I mean, but you can't quite get the word out because I can't find the word in my mind at the yeah. moment. Yeah, uh, is it discontinued as well? I think it probably is. I've got it in different browns. It goes like browns and greys. Yeah, um, I might have some in my stash. Do a quick search, Arcania. And, and how is that stash it's doing? Botany lace. Yes, that's the one. Is that discontinued now, is it? It is, yeah, sadly. Because that was gorgeous. Why do they discontinue gorgeous yarns like that? I have absolutely no idea. Not a Scooby. So I don't know what everybody else has been up to. Um, have you had any excitement? Have you done a run today or an inside run? Me. No. I, I did a run. You did a run? Yeah, I did um, a mile and a half today indoors. I just did 20 minutes, well a little bit of a warm up. That's brilliant. But that, I've done four runs this week of two and a quarter miles, more or less. So It all adds up. 
Well, it does, and I feel a bit sort of antsy and a bit kind of like, oh, something if I haven't done it. Yeah. Then it's I had, yeah. I was just going to say, I had a, the best run yesterday in, I would say, years. I'd say a good two years, the last time that I had a run that felt like that. Yeah, and it's that new screenshot of her statistics, and I'm sat there thinking, I couldn't go that fast in the car. I did <laughs> the magic negative splits. Every single kilometre was faster than the previous one, Ooh. which is magic. And um, I looked at my watch when I was running on the fourth kilometre, and, and it said I'd done my last kilometre in five point five minutes and 59 seconds right oh, and I was like yes I've got under six minutes for a kilometer so I was like I was dying at this point the last kilometer stopped my watch and I did the last one even faster and I couldn't believe it I was just so happy but You've then it, Hi, won't, it doesn't go like that all the time Hi, Deborah and Rita Oh, is Rita there? Can't see Rita. She's just arrived. Hi, Rita. Always good to see. Yeah. So have you got a drink? Did you get a tea? I did get my standard big mug of tea. I, I must confess that mm. I've been with a tablespoon measuring out my gins the last few evenings because I had a VE day, gin, a, a couple of gins, as you do, and then yeah, just oh, one because I had some sins left. And then yesterday it was a hot sunny day, and I thought, get to five o'clock, it feels a bit like gin o'clock. So I definitely oh, during the evening, and it was only on my first gin of yesterday where I thought, do you know, I really should check what the sins are because I've been counting four sins for a gin. And I've been measuring a tablespoon and a half because that looked about right in my glass from what yeah. I remember from like a century ago when I when we had a pub. And it's 35 mil that I can have. So it's two tablespoons <gasps> and a teaspoon. So I've been short changing myself on my gin all week. That is just shocking. Oh. You could have had that little bit extra and you didn't even realise it. I know. I mean... Where's the justice in that? Terrible. Just off with it. I've got an echo to show you. Ooh. Now, a caveat to that, it's got no buttons and I haven't woven any ends. Right. Oh, it's so cute. It's the second size baby cardigan. Um, you'll see that, you see the back of the neck where I've done a three needle bind off. Yeah. Very neat. And picked up and worked the front bands along the back mm -hmm. neck ready to uh -huh. join. So minimum seams and on the inside of the back neck it's it feels flat, you can't feel it at all. Um so it'll be quite comfortable for whichever baby ends up with it. But yeah, it just needs ends waving in and it is just gorgeous. Really pleased with it. I have to make a confession. Come on in. Well, you know, you think you know your own pattern because you've written it. And you get a number in your head and you think, I've got that many rows to do or this measurement and this is all in rows. <laughs> Thinking, yeah, it's only, it's only so many rows for the sleeve, 30 rows, and then the rib and cast off, do the other sleeve. And then I'm thinking... Doesn't really look long enough when you compare it to the body. What what's going on there? I thought I'll just check the pattern. I'll just undo the cuffs, unweave the ends. How <laughs> short were you? you? Ten rows on both sleeves. Oh God. <laughs> Could have been worse. It was fine. That one again. And I have a sleeve on this one. Superb. I am loving that Argyle pooling. Oh, it's That's brilliant, good. isn't it? It's so cute. That is gorgeous. And um, this is how far I am with the other sleeve. So I can't say hashtag sleeve gate anymore. Well, not for this particular one. And I've grafted and joined. I think it's quite a neat join. Yeah, it is. For the collar. Um, and of course, being a three needle bind off it, 
it always looks quite tidy as an edge so I've just got ends to weave in and buttons to find um, I might have some Lucy uh, Attic 24 buttons that I was going to do her mm -hmm. rainbow cushions in fact I made them but I wasn't happy with my gauge my gauge was a bit loose okay they were a bit floppy the cushion covers and they were going to be a gift for my niece Shana when she was getting married and she's got a little baby now and they've been married years um so I put it away and I ended up making her one of the painted roses blankets the like the grey and purple one that I did for Becky but this was in sort of shabby chic colours cream and green and yeah. whatnot like old-fashioned fabric and um, teacups those kind nice. of colours <laughs> so so I did that for her instead and I, I kept thinking to myself that I'm going to do these cushion covers at some point well it's never happened has it and I've used yeah. it for something else now because I wound it all back into little balls and then just made Christmas decorations and odd mm -hmm. bits of gifts and you know it happens yeah and stuff like that with it so it's never made into cushions but I have two sets of the bright set of rainbow buttons so I could, I could pinch three three buttons yeah. and have one of each you know just pick three colors that might go with it I didn't think you had any buttons left in your house at all not even on clothes that you still wear um, I thought you pinched I, them all I've got little shirt buttons and little baby buttons and things like that but grown up buttons I think I've got one pack left which were Rowan buttons and would have been quite expensive had I not got them for sort of seven pence each in the sale instead yeah. of, sort of a pound each for each button um and I, I got loads of the damn things because I thought I'm never going to be able to get these again and you know the Rowan Karma in that kind of peachy colour I was working with the other week where I did the swatch for the the baby cardigan the first tiny baby cardigan yes. in yeah. the worsted well they, they match that yarn oh. and I've got enough for a sweater and a cardigan so perfect I wasn't going to use those buttons, but that's the only ones for me that I've actually kept. <laughs> Everything else has gone. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I did have a, a couple of massive Port Marion storage jars filled with buttons and the oh, all gone. You'll have to build that up again then, won't you? Yeah, I'm sure I'll pick them up as time goes on. You know, next year we yeah. actually should be going out as opposed to now. Um I'm not going to be changing what I do next week. Me neither. And on, I'm going to have to get Jake to give me a couple of days warning as to when he's coming home again after helping out with the sheep. Right. Because I'll have to self-isolate for two weeks again. Uh, um, so I'll either have to do an online shop. Which I, I could probably get my friend Denise to add it to hers and then just pay her. And then go and pick it up at a house when it's delivered. Yeah. So we've shops for about seven people in the village. <laughs> it's a massive order that comes and then prints out the full order and then highlights the ones that are theirs and talks it all up and then sorts out the money with them. Yeah. I could probably do that with her and then just back for the money. It's, it's all these money. logistical things, isn't it? It's yeah, all very you well saying you've got to self isolate for two weeks, but you've got to still be able to live in those two weeks, haven't you? Well, that's right. Um, and I'm, I mean, my my backstop if I can't do any of that, and I'm I'm sure I will be able to, is doing say a click and collect or something, um, because Tesco have the occasional slot, and I've got a better chance of getting my lacto free yogurt and stuff because. I experimented and had some yoghurt again yesterday and coughed the whole afternoon mm. after I'd had it. So I really am going to have to cut out the dairy. I've not yeah. had anything with gluten today and my heart rate has dropped by about 10 points. It's just actually quite hard to get to peak heart rate during my run this morning. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's good. The longer you do it, the more it's going to come down anyway. Yeah, well, I like when it says, you know, you've done 35 minutes of running and 20 something minutes were at peak rate. It makes me feel like I work dead hard. 
but it's probably just because my body's working harder than it should because I'm filling it full of rubbish. <laughs> You're not going to venture outside for your run then? Um, I probably will do. Um, we'll see what they do on these so-called relaxations. If you can go out as much as you want and I can take the dogs out very early and then have a run after that because I seem to do better if I go earlier in the day than later in the day not least because I'm more likely to actually do it once again yeah. afternoon I get into cat be asked mode that's how I like to do it as well because apart from anything you're already warmed up if you take the dogs out and you're walking your muscles are all warmed up and then you can just go out and do your run and, and you don't get that really difficult first kilometer yeah i'm debating on going out in my uh, camo tiki boos yeah, I, mean, I, should. I do look like i've been poured in them and forgot to say when there are lumps where i never knew i had lumps but, oh, but if you're a long enough top it'll be fine it'll be fine it'll be lovely i've had issues with my food and that as well this last week my stomach has been up and bloated like it was at the height of my problems mm. and i've been kept awake with cramps and do you know what i think it is those fruit teas that i've been drinking oh what's in them apple mango so I've come off them. Right. Because I was thinking if I if I drink those instead of tea and coffee, obviously they're caffeine free, it's better for me. Yeah. But I don't think they're any good. So I'm I'm on water with a slice of lime. Right, okay. Oh Helen's with us and she's back oh, home. Is she home? She's home, yeah. Oh, woo woo. Celebrate. I know, woo, isn't that woo, lovely? Woo. Feels super good. Like my little celebration dance. <laughs> oh, it's so nice to get home your own bed. Oh, there is something we need to say. Uh -huh. For our, our friends across the pond. Oh yes, definitely. Oh perhaps not do that to the cake. No. Definitely not. Oh, <laughs> that would still be me. <laughs> that is funny. <laughs> oh dear. So I've still not done any knitting. Um, I feel like it's taken me as long as it would have taken to knit an adult sleeve to knit these baby sleeves, but it's because it's moss stitch or seed stitch and. Your yarn's going there, then there, then there, then there. Yeah, there, it's, there. it's like doing a mile of ribbon. Oh, Helen says hello, but she says she's still really shattered. I'm not surprised. Hospitals are just the most awful places to try and mm. stick them, aren't they? They're horrible. They're really the temperature's yeah. never right. Well, yeah, and there's even at night, because it's that kind of place, isn't it? There's emergencies and there's stuff going on. Um, there's always noise. Even yeah. when people try really hard to be quiet. And they usually wake you up at two o'clock in the morning to take your blood pressure. Yeah, my dad was in the, um, they call it the acute medical unit now, but it used to be called medical assessment where they, they kind of put you if they thought they might have to keep you for a day or two, but they didn't want you on a ward. Is that AAU? Possibly. Acute assessment unit. Yeah, it's just, they keep changing the name. It's a bit yeah. like CSI, isn't it? I still call yeah. it Soco. Soco. In the crimes, because that's what it is. We're not American. Yeah, well, and they don't look like CSI either. Exactly. Um, but what made me laugh is we'd gone to visit my dad. Mm. And, you know, you kind of hear something and you think it's out of place. Yeah. Um, but there's a curtain behind me that's between the two beds and I'm thinking I can hear running water but I can't see a sink right and I got up and I looked on the floor and there's a pool of water appearing underneath my chair I leapt across the room and went and got the nurse and there's this poor old fella who's obviously got Alzheimer's 
stood with his willy in his hand, having a massive horse pee all over the floor of the ward. Um, <laughs> and I just thought, you know, you could do this obscure stuff, but how does anybody ever get an ounce of sleep? Because there's always someone who just has no idea what's happening to them. No. Or what's going on around them. And then there's other people who are making lots of noise and can't help themselves. You know, that it's just not a good place to actually get a good night's kip, is it? Which is what you need when you're feeling poorly, unfortunately. Yeah. Oh, well, we're yeah. really glad you're home, Helen. That's excellent news. It's always nice to be in your own place. Oh, goodness me, yeah. Are you able to knit a bit now or are you too tired to kind of concentrate on it? Because it must, you probably want a couple of days of sort of lazy and sleepy. To what, try a bit of rubbish? Yeah, trashy television or whatever. Yeah, that you don't even have to concentrate on that. Yeah, I mean, assuming Gilly isn't already pestering you to take him somewhere. Mind you, I suppose Gilly can pester Paul. Yeah. But he might want loads of cuddles now that you're home because, you know, you've been somewhere. Although when I came out of hospital after having my surgery, the, all despite the fact that I couldn't really walk very well, all I wanted to do was go for a walk, get some fresh air, be outside. When I was in having Jake, they kept me for a month before I had him. And on a Sunday, if my blood pressure had dropped enough, we were allowed to go to Tesco's. <gasps> I know, wandering, you know, eight, eight months pregnant, wandering around Tesco's in your pyjamas because you're just <laughs> allowed to leave the hospital. <laughs> and to get a little bit of shopping and things to take back with you and then Kevin will get the shopping to take home. And then if they would, if we were really good, we could be out for a couple of hours and we would grab a, a cup of tea and just sit and relax mm. and watch the world go by. It was, it was such a welcome part of normality but yeah. on one of the days where they wouldn't really let me out I could sit outside the maternity unit which is where the entrance to A&E is or was then and where will the smokers hang out uh yeah we have moved away from the smokers but we used to play <laughs> hatch match or dispatch for the oh yeah see what they're coming in yeah. for yeah yeah <laughs> that's funny I like it. Yeah, it was good. That reminds me of that programme that used to be on ITV um, with Martin Clunes and I think it was Julie Graham. She's a midwife and he was an undertaker. Ooh. Oh, I can't remember what it was called now. I don't think I've actually seen that. I liked Martin mm. Clunes in Men Behaving Badly, but I don't yeah. like that doctor thing that he does i love doc martin oh no i just want to slap him oh helen says she's done a few rounds on her sock and gilly was pleased to see her for about 10 minutes i will yeah and then they get the um strop on don't they it's like oh i can't wait to see oh yeah i'm so happy to see you and then they're like oh but you left me i'm gonna move with you yeah you stare, <laughs> stare at my bum and I'm going to yeah. point it at you and look elsewhere. I'm just going to lift my head and go, no, I'm not looking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Doggies, eh? I'm hoping I'll get this sleeve done at least to the start of the ribbon. It's looking good. Yeah, I'm quite pleased with it. The yarn, um, the colours in real life. Do you remember those love heart sweeties? Oh, love them. Yeah, that's the colours. Love it. So I'll have to acquire from somewhere a pack of Love Heart Sweets for the photographs, won't I? You can get them. No, I'll get them, like, have one of the I Love You Baby or Baby Be Mine or something like that. You can get, uh, you can definitely get all those swizzle street, that uh, sweets, not streets, swizzle sweets. That's a tongue twister. You yeah, don't want to say after a gin, is it? No, definitely not. On um, Amazon, you get the retro box of retro sweeties. Yeah, the problem with the box is I'll eat the box. Yeah. Well, I, did, I did have some in the house, 
Right, a little romantic gift that Jake had got for Rosie and then decided it was twee and pointless. And it was a tiny little gift bag and it had a, a miniature packet of about six sweets and then a little love heart candle and something else in there. I think it was a bubble blower and some pink bubble stuff. Right. Liquid soapy stuff. And he decided it was a bit twee and threw it at me and went, Oh, you might have loved that. <laughs> My goodness, oh, boys. generosity knows no bounds. Um, and you know, within about five minutes, I'd eaten the sweets. Oh well, strange that, isn't it? Well, because they were just there, weren't they? Did they just fall in the mouth? Because that happens, you know. Yeah, it, it's an accidental thing, and especially when your mm. mouth is as big as mine. It, it, it just it happens. It uh, did you see the post I put in the group of the uh, the Jane Austen thing? Um, I did see it. I didn't read it. I watched my Bohemian Rhapsody video. That was really good, wasn't it? Did you see that little girl in the background? Oh, I know, dancing. <laughs> Jamie and Stitches. I thought I, I, it was I, so good. And the thing is, afterwards, her mum's going to have gone, well, I'm not recording it again. <laughs> well, I couldn't quite work out when she tweaked what she was doing yeah i wasn't sure if she knew all along or you know if she was ignoring her or if she didn't know at all it, it was just i was too busy laughing to be honest <laughs> <laughs> that's the that sort of thing really that good. my kids would have done they'd have been stood behind me doing that or something you know, like, yeah <laughs> funny ears so yeah my two had me awake all night last night again Callum went to bed at half five, I think. Right. Kate, Caitlin went out and walked the dog in the rain at five o'clock this morning. Right. And I was just like, what's going on? So then I, I kind of dozed a bit and I didn't wake up properly until 10 to 7, which is really late for me. That is late for you. Yeah. Um, obviously making up for lost sleep from the little monsters. Uh, oh yeah, it's you need to be in there with the Hoover. Mm, I know. I do need to do it tomorrow. Actually, can you see? Yeah, uh, can you see my boy? Let me swap screen. Uh, yeah, someone looks way too comfortable <laughs> there. I, do, I just need a long. <laughs> Like that. Oh look, he moved! Oh, yeah, he moved! Well done, you you got him. <laughs> I bet you couldn't do that again. Oh, wasn't that ace timing? <laughs> oh, well done. Is she laughing at you, son? Is she? Yeah, he's tired yeah. boy today. Oh, bless him. <laughs> he's like, she just poached me with a stick, mum. Oh, bless. He's the only one that shows me any consideration. So um, I actually had a conversation with my husband today on the oh, phone. And how is he? He's doing all right. He's still working one in three days. Right. Um, it, we were talking about this whole travel thing because, you know, they're saying that they're going to put people into two weeks quarantine when they come back. Oh, oh, sorry, rephrase that. They're not going to put people in two weeks, but they are going to have to quarantine. The way I understand it is that they fly in and they have to register in a, a private address and they have to go to that address and stay there for two weeks. Yeah. And also the way that I understand it is if, say, Phil came home, he would have to come to the house and he would have to be in a room away from all of us for two weeks. So... That sounds a bit pointless, really, considering that he normally only comes home for about 10 days. And then when he goes back to work, he'd have to do the same for two weeks when he goes back to work. Not worth it, is it? So at the moment, even if they do start flying backwards and forwards, it doesn't look like he's going to be coming home anytime soon. So I've said to him, I said, look, you know, at the end of the day, if this is going to be going on for any length of time, you're seriously going to have to reconsider your position out there because I'm not doing this for two years. 
Well, I mean, his other option is that if he comes home, he comes, he saves his holidays and he comes home for six weeks and he spends a decent amount of time at home. But even that, that is quite hard on you and him. Even that would well, mean, yeah. um, that would mean one, one visit a year for two weeks that we could actually do something and then the other four weeks of that six weeks would be in quarantine at either end yeah it's just not worth it well no it isn't but I so there are people in the same position at the moment aren't they so uh yes yeah, so it looks like i might get my wish for him to retire sooner than he was expecting to be honest because i'm not doing it i'm not doing two years well two and a half years of seeing him for two weeks once a year it's not what i signed up for no it isn't what i signed up for but i must admit i'm quite enjoying it at the moment not having that hassle <laughs> that's you <laughs> <that> sound awful <laughs> no, i didn't actually hear what you said because you froze on my screen i think my internet's going a bit stupid again what with my kids playing on it all the time i'm just saying i'm quite enjoying that having the hassle of um visits and um because mike and i would be what at one another's throats because our political views are polar opposites right and he thinks that this bunch of imbeciles are doing an amazing job it's best not to say anything and I, that, really. think, I just think he's on another bloody planet what a moron um, so we don't discuss it. So we're, we're not speaking on the phone at the moment. We talk on email and things like that. And we we avoid politics because I would just rip his face off. I absolutely would. I just find it incredulous how they can say that we've been a success and that the world is looking at us um, as a model of how to do it and blah, blah, blah. The world but, is looking at us and wetting itself laughing. That's what it's honestly, doing honestly because for weeks everyone was warning us and i honestly and now they're gonna they're gonna let people out by the sounds of it and um germany their rate has gone up yeah and in spain i mean i don't i don't profess to know what the answer is i honestly don't know because people aren't going to stay in they're not staying in i mean did you see the scenes over the weekend the the police were fighting a losing battle i saw a report on the news about a family that was stopped on the way to the lake district and they'd come up from the southeast yeah you know cretins i tell you but it's all right because we're just gonna have to stay alert you know the problem is they're not going to be the ones that die It'll no. be some beggar else that they've infected that'll peg it. That's the problem. Yeah. I mean, it's, uh, Jake was, we did have a serious conversation when he said, I'm going to go through to Rosie's help with the sheep and this is going on and that's going on. And, and that's fine because he might as well be doing something. As long as he does his college work, I'm not bothered. But I did say, I have to say to him that, you know, when you come home, you can't go anywhere at all. You can't come shopping. And I won't be able to leave the house either. Can he not stay there instead of coming home? Um, I suppose it, it, it's up. It's how long they want to put up with him, isn't it? <laughs> True. They love him to bits. They're the same. They love him as if they love him as if he was their own son. And which is good, really. It, I mean, we joke. Uh, I refer to Rosie as my daughter-in-law, and. Tracy always calls Jake her son-in-law and we've been like because they've been together four and a half years now and they just seem so suited they just you know yeah let them get on with it I mean he might as well just stay there like I say he doesn't seem any bother no and he helps out with the sheep he, he'll walk the dogs and things like that because uh, I don't know if Tony's working from home or not I've not asked the question to be honest no. he usually works at Sellafield I don't know if he's cast as as key from a safety point of view or whether he's able to work from home and run his team from there which he may well be able to do mm. in which case having Jake there with Rosie driving 
um, to be able to go to the, the sort of further reaches of where the animals are out at Bowes, which is a bit of a trail. Yeah. Um, that saves them an awful lot of time and effort. And the pair of them are used to being around sheep, so they know what to do if there's a problem. Yeah. You know, so it works quite well. Yeah. But yeah. I would just have you on your own. Had dinner with them on um, Boxing Day. Well, my I know you did. Yeah. My mum made a big fuss about. Oh gosh, no, you got you on your own again. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm on my own sort of eighty percent of the time because even when he's home, he's upstairs. Yeah. He's downstairs conversing with me just because he's home. No, he's been doing his college work and things like that. Once they went back, well. You know what I mean? They didn't really go anywhere, but <laughs> yeah, he needed to start doing college work again. He's been doing that, uh, and he was doing an extra assignment yesterday that he wanted to do for extra credit. And he's joined a student council and stuff like that. Um, again, extra credit, bit of recognition. Always good on your CV. Well, it does, and I've always said to him that the only way to change things really is to lead the change. Uh, and you, you can lead from the side, but you can't really lead from the back. You have to lead from right. the front. So, I don't know. Uh, we'll figure it out. He'll let me know when he's coming home, and then if necessary, I'll have to get onto Tesco's in the early hours and book a click and collect our delivery. Or I can speak to Denise. If she could get me my lacto free yogurts and stuff that I want so that I've got some yogurt or something I can have for cooking. Yeah. Um, I've got everything I need to make meringues and other stuff. If I want a sweet something that hasn't got gluten, there's biscuits and stuff he can eat. We've got enough food for a siege. The only thing really we would need would be fresh bread for him, mm -hmm. so free stuff for me. And even then, I've always got 10 days to two weeks worth of milk in the house for me because my mum always sort of drummed it into me that you have to be prepared yeah, yeah. um i don't know it's just it's fresh good. fruit and veg in our house because we do eat a lot of it yeah i took a hint with that i got some pears and i accidentally got some pink lady apples i like pink I lady apples. i like pink lady apples but i didn't pick any up so they're either the lady in front of me's apples right okay oh the lady behind me but they weren't mine but i've bought them and i've got them so it's oh. they're quite expensive though aren't they well, yeah, I was looking at them thinking, i'm sure i looked at them and thought i'm not paying that <laughs> i think it's something if you're lucky it's like two pounds for four of them or, or something along those lines they are expensive um one of our friends down in wales has got a tree with pink ladies on them Oh. absolutely delicious now that's worth having but i can't have apple they just give me really bad griping stomach cramps and wind so yeah uh, i don't know if i react to them to be honest it was, it was a bit of a spike the other day um but i've been eat, i've been having a, a pair a day and yeah banana and apple and i have me frozen fruit anyway raspberries and what i've been having i've got some of those meringue nests uh, I like those. Those are five sins. And then I had the last of the yogurt, the coughing yogurt. Um, what about I, jellies? Hmm? Jelly? Are you allowed jellies? Yeah. Because I had, um, I bought a load the other day. I absolutely love jelly. And if you get the no added sugar, but five calories for a pot of jelly, I mean, that's nothing. Well, I make a jug of jelly yeah and whack that in the fridge and then i'll just pull the jug out when i want some and then load it's a dish brilliant, up. isn't it or take the jug <laughs> yeah <laughs> i mean jelly. there's so few calories in there yeah and, and I'll, I'll sit and absent-mindedly eat that while i'm watching a movie it's fine and it, it's it's, yeah. it's a nice sweet treat isn't it without too much bother <laughs> yeah so i thought i could have meringue nests and jellies and then either fresh oh, nice. fruit or fresh fruit yeah and if I could get some lacto-free yogurt, then great. I could have that with some vanilla. Rita says that she likes pink lady apples and that they're expensive there as well. 
Yeah, it's funny that, isn't it? I wonder if they're a difficult variety to get a good crop. Mm, possibly. Or whether it's just a triumph of marketing. Well, they're the sweetest ones on the market, I think, aren't they? Not golden delicious, they're quite sweet. They're sweet, but they haven't got as much flavour to them, I think. Yeah, they're a bit mm, watery, aren't they? Yeah, I had to cut the core of my apple into two, though, because obviously I have two ravenous pigs that are never fed. Um, yeah. It was as soon as I get an apple. And the same with the pear. I mean, I generally eat everything but the stick with the pear. But I'm having to save the car and then snip it in two with my little scissors because otherwise there's all hell let loose. And I don't see what for the tiniest little tree. I have found online today, I was looking, and on the BBC Good Food, right, I found mm. a recipe for a gluten free chocolate cherry. Um, what is it? Hang on two seconds. Chocolate cherry fudge tort. Ooh, did I send you the link for Ilana's pantry? Because she does oh, some no. almond flour chocolate. I can't have it. almonds. Oh, God. <laughs> you could use Sorry. cashews. Have you got cashews? Um, I don't know. I'd just use normal flour. Just use the gluten free flour that Dove's Farm. We could use that, just a standard cookie recipe, but she puts chunks of dark chocolate in and maraschino, yeah. maraschino cherries, undyed maraschino cool. cherries. Honestly, if there's a, a fete or a fair or something going on in the village, I will get a message from someone saying, are you making the cookies? Guess I am. <laughs> You'll have, to, you'll have to send a link to me because I don't think you did before. I would just I just substitute in whatever I need to when I look at them. I mean, to be fair, most of the time I do just go for a normal recipe. But this one actually specifies the Dove's Farm um, right. plain flour. And it's vegan as well, which is good because I can't have normal chocolate. I can only use the vegan stuff. So I'm going to give that a try. I think I've got most of the ingredients. I've got the cherry liqueur. Um, I just have to have a look. I, I think I've got bicarbonate of soda. I've got one or the other. I'm not sure if I've got baking powder or bicarb. And I've never understood what the difference is between the two of them and why you'd sometimes need both and why sometimes it says either or. I'm the wrong one to ask. My mother would be able to tell you. I just don't. I don't understand. It doesn't make any sense. I always thought I it was an either or thing. Bicarb is quite salty, hence right. the order. Um, mm. and I know when I use it in biscuits, it's it's the thing that if you use too much, you'd get too crunchy or crispy a biscuit, and there's more of a salty taste. Right. I'm not a big cooker. I really am. I just really fancy cherry chocolate. I absolutely love it. It's one of my favourites. Black Forest Gatto. Oh, don't. My mum used to get these cakes off the milkman. God knows why she got them off the milkman. But it was Black Forest Gatto and Death by Chocolate. And she always got them at Christmas. I absolutely oh. love a BFG. Oh. Oh. And they were a really massive one in farm foods. It says it serves 24. That's nah. It doesn't serve 24. It serves, it's about six portions. <laughs> this is the thing. What what the manufacturers say is a portion and what I say is a portion are two different things. Same, same with crisps. Oh, Helen's saying that jelly and ice cream was on the menu every day in hospital and it was very popular in her early recovery. Um, I just, I can't believe that You've got to come home and eat more to put on weight. And that you're going to have to have bacon rolls every day and things like that. To, to, it's a <laughs> hard job. Yeah, you need to have my share so that I can. I mean, to be fair, you could have a bacon roll without the roll. On well, world. <laughs> well, what I've started doing with anything like that is if I really feel it needs to look the part, is I'll buy portobello mushrooms. Oh, I love those. And cook those briefly in the oven. 
Um, and then I'll, I'll sort of stick a, a half, you know, a mushroom underneath the burger on top of the burger. And it looks like a bun. <laughs> it tastes lovely as well. I love mushrooms. I love mushrooms. Unfortunately, they don't love me. Yeah, Jake and my dad absolutely hate them. It's a textural thing. Yeah. Uh, if I buy mushroom ketchup, because uh, obviously it's got a ton of flavour in it, um, delete that. Mm. Oh, so Helen's supposed to be on high protein for a while. Oh, you'll have to get some of those protein shakes. You can get some really fantastic flavours. I think I've got um, banana and toffee or something like that oh. in the cupboard for Jake. Bacon and eggs. Well, it's something that I used to get in for him if ever he was ill, because he would go off his food completely if he was poorly. Yeah. And he's always been skinny and tall for his age, and you can't afford to lose it when you're that little. No. Um, so I would make milkshakes with them and, and stuff like that, and then add extra calories. We and don't We don't have that problem in our house. We're the opposite end of the spectrum. Yeah, I've got the wrong power to weight ratio. I can't do high protein. Um, I need a lot more fiber in my diet. Do you? Yeah. High, I think high protein has stressed my system too much. If oh. I don't have enough carbs, I can't stop eating. Yeah, I've got to have a certain amount of carbs, certainly mm. for an evening meal or I don't sleep. Yeah, definitely. And I'll try and make it sweet potato, but if not, I'll quite happily eat white potato. And oh, I just eat potatoes. Mix. I had a baked potato with baked beans for my lunch, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. Oh, sounds good. The mm. only thing you could have done to improve that was perhaps the addition of some sausage. <laughs> Sausages are in the freezer at the minute. I got some um, reduced fat sausage in Alta the other day for me and then the standard Cumberland for Jake. And I can eat the Cumberland. It's not that I can. It's just they're five sins each and the other ones are about two and a half or something. Mm. Um, so I can have two sausages versus one. But the difference in the two, the succulence of the one that's got the fat in it, it's just so... Oh. <laughs> I do so... like a good sausage. Yeah, might be a while before we're getting any. <laughs> I just have to make do with the gluten-free Lincolnshire's from Morrison's. I really like those. All oh, the Aldi ones are all gluten-free. Most of the Asda sausage are gluten-free. They're very good in that respect. Most sausages are gluten-free now, to be honest, like, especially mm -hmm. the good ones. It's generally just the cheaper ones. They're packing them in, aren't they? Yeah. Um, but I just like the Morrison's ones. They seem to have more flavour. I didn't enjoy the Tesco ones as much. I don't like the Tesco sausage. I just don't feel they've got enough um, like seasoning in them or something. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Um, I don't um, know the worst sausage I've ever had. Like a, I was going to say, it sounds like an interesting story, that. Well, you know, <laughs> it's a dark night. <laughs> um, have you ever heard the story of the worst sausage Lorraine has ever had? <laughs> Are we allowed to discuss these things on a Sunday afternoon, or is that strictly midnight only? Oh, I'm sure it's allowed. Um, no, the Slimming World sausages—they're very high protein, right? But, but it's like having a gob full of rubber. So it's oh. like chewing a rubber Kong tie off that your dog's had. Okay. Are those um, the range that they started selling in Iceland? Yeah, they're exclusive okay. to Iceland. So I would rather have one or half or one and a half or two sins or whatever per sausage and get the Aldi ones or the Asda ones. I think the Hex sausages, the chicken Italia is like half a sin per sausage. You could eat a whole pack through yeah. the day and snack on them in between other stuff and of course you're then absolutely full because you've been eating protein i do like the heck sausages actually i really do like those i don't like corn sausages um i corn makes me itch i don't know what it is about okay. it but it's I made from mushrooms isn't it yeah um 
I don't know if it's the actual processing of it to achieve what it is, but if I had some, then I would be scratching my neck off because it would be all red and raw. Mm. And, mm. and whole works for corn. Do you see? Yeah. Well, uh, Jake's stepmom lives on the stuff. Does she? Yeah, bat and cheese. So does Anne. <laughs> but not cheese. She doesn't like cheese, but she lives on corn. Yeah, I, I like the corn mince. It just doesn't like me. Yeah, I think um, a lot of people say you can't tell the difference with the corn mince, don't they? I've I've never been a huge fan because just it cooks different, doesn't it? It does. Um, yeah, yeah, and the sausages and things like that. Is that how I get, girls? Oh, somebody coming in. Someone at the door. Oh. I've got yeah, a song about that. Door. There's somebody at the door. There's somebody at the door. Is it grot bags? She's leaving me on my own. I haven't even got any knitting to flash. Who do we think it is? It's not the postman because it's Sunday. It might be Amazon. Did we think she's ordered some books? Oh, who, who are you talking to? That's it, a two weeks at home. <laughs> what? Is Jake back? Yes. Yeah. That wasn't a very long time away, was it? No. I don't think Emma's complaining. <laughs> Has they had an argument? No. I don't think so. I was expecting him to be gone for about three weeks. What's he say? He says all the food's here. <laughs> right, okay, now that makes sense. Yeah, you'll be wanting those kebabs for your tea, will you? Tea no controlled by his stomach. Yeah. He says, yeah. <laughs> Did I tell you about my chilli that I made the other day? Mm, you mentioned that you'd had chilli. But I don't remember you telling me about it. Do you come well, off? Spill. <laughs> Normally, like I was making chilli probably once a week because it's one of mine and Callum's favourites and I'd make a big batch of it and it'd last us for a couple of meals, right? Mm. And I would normally get the packet mix of spices the gluten-free one but it obviously because you put gluten-free on it it's really expensive yes and i was in the shop and i thought to myself how difficult can it be to put a few spices in a chili mix it's i'm gonna do it all. i'm gonna do it myself right Ooh. so i've fried up the mints and everything and, and got to the point i've normally put my spices in and I looked on the BBC and it said cumin, chilli, um, marjoram, um, and I put salt and pepper in. I can't remember if I put anything else in. But anyway, I put in the spices that it said on the BBC website, right? Tasted it and it was disgusting. Absolutely mm -hmm. horrible. Yeah, didn't like it. There was, I think I might have maybe put too much cumin in i'm not sure yeah but anyway i just left it on the on the top callum was in bed and i was just going to say to him are oh, your chilies there and just eat it and I, I walked away in disgust left it come back like an hour later i was starving and i thought i'm gonna have to do something with this there's a lot of mints in there i can't just waste it i'm gonna have to resolve this so I went in the cupboard and I looked at all my spices and I sniffed them and I smelled them and I thought, right, that Jamaican jerk smells really, really nice. It's going in. I don't care. <laughs> put a load of Jamaican jerk in it. And I thought, yeah, that's all right. I can eat that. Anyway, Callum's had about three helpings of it. <laughs> that's what cooking's about. You experiment and find what you like. I mean, I made that. Cajun dirty rice out of the Pinch and Nom uh, website. Yeah. In their cookbook um, months ago now. And Jake generally isn't a big fan of rice. He'll eat it, but, you know, it, it's a waste of space as far as he's concerned. 
Yeah. I made that with some pork mince. And you know when you're trying to get this stupid little plastic wrapper off the spice thing and I'm faffing about yeah. it. And I was obviously too rough with it because and I'm twisting the lid to take because there's a plastic thing underneath you have to take off. And went like that. And about two tablespoons or maybe even half the bloody pot went into the mint. <laughs> Yeah, really not supposed to use that much. Oh, what, what spice is there? Cajun. So Cajun it, spice. Mixed it all through. And then I thought, well, I'll let it cook out for half an hour and come back and see what it's like. Do you know, it was brilliant. It was so good. And then, and then he's, I sent some to work with him for him and his mates. Um, and I'm picking him up that evening and I'm sat outside college in the car staring into space and there's somebody going beep, 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 beep. And I look round and it's his mate hanging out the car going, Oh, thanks ever so much. That top dinner. Absolutely brilliant. Thanks ever so much, Mrs. T. <laughs> I love it. For anyone that's confused at this point, Jake is a Thompson. Yeah. I made a name of Birchall. But there are still people who call me Mrs. Thompson or Mrs. T. Were you married to Mr. T? Um, <laughs> well, he was tall and he was quite imposing. But. <laughs> so, but so he didn't wear a big medallion and go around going, I pity the fool. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, wow. Well. Um, when, when he grew his beard, he looked like Captain Kremen. Who? Captain Kremen. Who's Captain Kremen? It was a Kenny Everett character. Uh, I know some of his characters. I remember the woman with the, in the best possible taste. Stupid stunt. You have to say that very carefully. Yeah. And um, the one with the big hands. Oh, here we go. Let me do a, a screenshot, see if I can. Uh, share screen. There you are, that's Captain Kremen. All oh, right, yeah. They had the curly hair and everything. I used to keep it cut very sharp for him. It's, it's obviously a thing with me because uh, Mike has super curly hair as well. Yeah, I don't like the, the, the beard thing where they have it round there, but they don't have it across there. I just think it looks really weird and stupid. Yeah, I don't get that. Mm -hmm. Goodness me. Oh, Helen said that she had to have ensure drinks in hospital, but she only really liked the strawberry. Um, years ago, they used to give you the complan ones in the oh, little yeah. retro packs, and they had one that was eggnog flavour. Oh, it was so good. Was it? It doesn't sound good at all. Well, it smelt like you were having alcohol. Uh... <laughs> and a ward full of pregnant women. <laughs> kind of felt a bit decadent that's when i um i got my taste for just drinking tonic on its own was when i was pregnant with callum so everyone else was drinking around me so i used to just have a glass of ice and lemon and tonic water and pretend i had a gin in it well you can fool yourself if you get some um, gin flavoring you well, can just rub it around the rim of the glass and most people won't notice that there's no gin in the drink no because they can smell it Exactly. And, and they'll get quietly drunk on it, which is even more amusing. <laughs> it's funny when you give someone like an alcohol free beer and they think it's got alcohol in it. <laughs> you sit there going, Oh, that's quite strong, isn't it? Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, you're going to be under the table with that one. <laughs> I'm just sitting here scratching my dog's bottom. Sorry. Have you had a promotion? Yeah, like, I think so. <laughs> I got to do Labrador booby rubs with my feet this morning. Oh, that was lucky then, wasn't it? Well, the thing with Coco that I never really understand is she sort of throws herself onto her back, but it's always about eight inches further away than your legs will reach. Yeah. And then she looks at you and the, the, the tail starts pounding on the laminate flooring. That's like, you know, rubby tits, rubby tits, rubby tits. Rubby tits. <laughs> Which is what she wants. But then you have to get down on the floor and drag her over by her feet so you can actually reach the right thing. I think they've got a really bad sense of spatial awareness, haven't they, dogs? 
Oh, honestly, they're dumber than wood at times. But they still they just... me. I don't know what that says about me. I have to do a quick count. One, three, five, seven, nine, eleven. 10. 27. Woo woo. Yeah. What's the matter? It's free to go and then I can start the ribbon. Cool. And then my sleeves will be officially finished. Hashtag sleeve gate is over. Well, no, no, I've got another one to make in the next size up and then I suppose I'll have to make one at about three months or six months to check the grading of the other one before I put them into test knit. Um, cool. So that'll be the next thing, won't it? I'll have to get other people to, to make them. I do yeah. like test knitters because it just gives you that feedback, doesn't it, on whether it's logical or not. Uh, when they read it back to you and go what the hell does that mean and you're like yeah <laughs> it doesn't well, mean anything <laughs> yeah it means i wasn't paying attention when i wrote that thing or perhaps i lent on the keyboard with my elbow <laughs> or that was the part of the pattern that i used as a template and i forgot to delete that bit <laughs> yeah, yeah done that's that. the one done that before. <laughs> yes Oh, my dog's just laid down in disgust. This is because you're so ne neglecting him like an oh, awful person. Of course, person. of course. I neglect him all the time. Just the person that you are. Yeah, definitely. Oh, oh excuse me. See, I'm all out of sorts because of them kids keeping me awake all night again. I'm going to go and read my book again for a little while tonight. I haven't really been watching any telly. Um, right. if you've not been in the mood no I don't want to start anything I've watched a few bits on the BBC um, you know have I got a bit more news for you and the MASH report and stuff like that just easy things that you can dip in and out of I haven't I haven't really been in the mood for movies or a series I haven't watched any more of The Witcher mm -hmm. um, I've finished the first book and that's your phone. It is, but I was studiously ignoring it because we're live on Facebook. Oh, sorry, that was me just drawing attention to it. Your phone's ringing. Come on. Um, it's my mother. Who oh, wants yeah. to better. That's about yeah. right. So yeah. yeah, so I'm on the second book. I've encouraged my brother. Can you believe, right? My brother is a huge fantasy fan. I used to steal all his fantasy books when we were growing up and um, mm. he loves Lord of the Rings, all things like that, love Game of Thrones, blah, 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 blah. I said to him, I'm, I'm reading the Witcher novels. And he was like, what's the Witcher? He'd never heard of the Witcher. I mean, I, I even had heard of it on Netflix. Um, so anyway, I told him to look it up and he bought the first book. And he's right. going to give it a go um so yeah i think he'll enjoy it it's a pity you're not on mission i know tell me about it yeah, yeah. affiliate links <laughs> i think the, the style of writing he's got a little bit of um a terry pratchett about him there's a little bit of humor in there quite like it well i do like the humor in the stories and i i quite like that the witcher himself doesn't always take himself as seriously as he could hmm. he has a code but he's also willing to be flexible and judge the situation and walk he's away as well, isn't he? he likes the ladies does seem to yes <laughs> yes so um so i haven't i've only watched the first well i say i've only watched the first episode i watched the first and then maybe about the first 10 minutes of the second episode, which made absolutely no sense to me whatsoever until I read the book and then I realised that that's actually Yennefer, isn't it? What's he got? Oh, he's, he's got a bagel with ham and soft cheese. It's just rude. Yeah, Emma wants to know where her bagel is. Not that I could eat the bagel or the cheese. No, and possibly not even the ham. I could eat the ham. Could you imagine if I decided to be a vegan on top of everything else? 
I can't think of anything worse, to be honest. Well, I don't think I'd have anything to eat, would I? I just, I'm, I mean, I'm going to have to eliminate some stuff from my diet and see what works and what doesn't. Um, but I do feel a lot better already, and my resting heart rate, my pulse rate has dropped 10 points over two days of not having gluten at all and, um, and not having yogurt. If I'm having yogurt it's going to have to be lacto free and even then i'm just gonna have to trial and error it might be that i can't have any at all well it i think it's it's an accumulative effect with men so i can have a bit of gluten-free bread but if i have too much i'm poorly you know or i can't have the gluten-free bread and a gluten-free cake in the same day um it's just if you have too much of all the different things that upset you, it's just not good. I can I can get away with one or two. Like I said to you, I can have a little bit of soya, or I can have a small amount of almond something. But if I end up with too much of it, if, um, I like those naked bars, but a lot of them have smushed up almonds. So I have to look at the ingredients and see the ones that have got almonds as a very, very, very small percentage and I can eat those but the ones like the lemon I love the lemon ones but the highest ingredient is almonds and they give me really bad stomach cramps yeah not good is it no so it is just like you say trial and error it's finding out what you can handle and you might be able to handle two things separately but not on the same day yeah oh well at least I know I've got to do a click and collect order now or a... <laughs> The book that I got from Amazon was called Healthy Gut, Flat Stomach. Right. And it, it's amazing. I've gone back to it again this week and it talks about um, the what, the, you know, the FODMAPs. Right. And which ones are the high and the low FODMAPs and working to see which ones you can tolerate together. And that it's a really good book. Well, I look at whether i lose weight and whether i'm swollen and whether my skin hurts mm. you know i'll touch my stomach and this skin hurts it's not my stomach that hurts it's the skin yeah <laughs> and you it's like tender. That. yeah and it's just achy all the time so there's inflammation going on and there's something i'm reacting to and i've got to get it out of my system and figure out what it was i, I don't get it. as scratchy as i did a couple of days ago my throat was and I was just <laughs> yeah all the time for me it's the stomach I get the bloating and the cramps but I get um numbness in my hands and feet if I have too much which is a bit bizarre it's a weird feeling no I don't get anything like that oh I do it's horrible no. nothing that interesting for me I'm afraid I'm just, yeah. lumpy Lumpy and itchy and lumpy and itchy. <laughs> now that's something different altogether. Could be. <laughs> Especially given the interesting sausages we've been discussing. Are you crying again? He's starved. He's starving. <laughs> Nobody loves him. Nobody ever feeds him. He's never allowed out. It's time for his dinner and nobody's fed him it yet. He's got yeah. chicken wings. And you need to stop doing this. You need yeah. to do the decrease at the start of the rib. Yeah. And the end of the rib on the first round. And not get halfway around the round and think, you haven't done your decreases. And tink it back, tink it back, tink it back, tink it back. See, too busy having a good old mm. natter. Mm. Bit of a chin wag now. Oh, wait, he's coming. You look worse than a child. <laughs> Can you even hear him? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't like to ask in case it was your stomach. Well, <laughs> no. find things if it's upset. You can hear my, this kind of like. Ooh. My niece put a video on Facebook of her baby moving around. She just like filmed her tummy and it was moving around. <laughs> and I very nearly commented, "Yeah, mine does that too. It's just wind." <laughs> Well, it's, and it's, it's tempting, but you don't do it because you don't know them because they're pregnant. But you are tempted to do the sort of alien gif with John Hurt and the exploding stuff. <laughs> 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 oh, 
<laughs> oh, it's funny. The best bit was when they were near to turn and you could see an actual foot coming out and it, you can see the shape of the foot pressing out of your stomach. That was bizarre. So there you are. So is that all ready for the rib now? It is. And look how different the pooling is on that. I liked I like that first one. It looks it's like a rainbow. They're all spiralled. It looks like a rainbow. It's funny, isn't it? Oh, well. Yeah, it's funny. Exactly the same number of stitches on each one. Yeah. How bizarre. Yeah, that's that song. <laughs> yeah. Do, 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 do. You know it's a song. I know a song about that. <laughs> <laughs> It's my favourite saying. I know. Yes. <laughs> my goodness. Have you heard him? I'm coming. He's just neglected and unloved and nobody cares and right. are all just horrible. Yeah. Sounds about right. So see that there you are. He's come on. He's emptied the kitchen. He's gone upstairs with the mug of tea and a mahusive plate full of bagels and stuff. To be fair, he did buy the bagels. But he's scoffing my ham. Um, and he's beggared off back to his room. So he's home, but I'm still on my own. <laughs> and <laughs> with the added bonus of having to stay at home for the next two weeks now. Yeah, gee, thanks for that. <laughs> Mind you, if you avoid him, I don't think you should have to. Just, just stay two metres away from him. You'll be all right. I suppose it's the practicalities. I mean... I'd feel happier if we'd been tested and could say with certainty that we've had it. I mean, I, I don't doubt for a second that what we had was COVID, given the symptoms and having spoken to people who've been in hospital with it. What we've described is exactly what they have. So it makes sense that we've had it. But then I think, well, you know, has he come on with a variation? No, I don't know. <laughs> And could I be spreading it because I'm touching, I, you know, I'm going to have to go back to scrubbing the, the dry handles and all the rest of it for the next two weeks. So I don't know. I might do a click and collect order because um, yeah. all you do is open the boot of the car and they actually load your car. I love click and collect. Because um, they don't want you touching stuff. Yeah. And they let you have a look through it and they go through what's missing and what's substituted but you don't actually touch anything and it's all done at a respectful distance. And they don't really like you to get out of your car if you can, up, I can't open my boot without getting out of the car. Right. So I'd have to park up, open the boot and then just wait as long as it takes for them to come with it. But, but that would be a, a suitable way to deal with it. Definitely, yeah. But I'm not worried for me particularly, I'm worried for other people. It's, it's who else you come in contact with. Yeah, it's a, it's a worry. Yes, but it was interesting. I thought there'd have been lots of people out singing to Dame Vera Lynn on, on Friday night. I didn't hear anybody singing. I mean, I was singing indoors, sobbing my heart out because it always makes me cry. It makes me cry. I watched the stuff on the BBC. I watched the afternoon one while it was on. Um, I did the. I watched in the morning with the eleven o'clock with the silence yeah, watch that and then i watched it, the one just before three and you mm. know winston churchill and everything and yeah. then the one in the evening with the queen's speech i watched that on saturday right um but friday night there was nobody at there was so i'm on a corner so i can see like a couple of people across the road from me and yeah. then my my next door neighbor is round the corner there and then right. my other next door neighbours round the corner there. So I don't really see my neighbours. They're, they're round the corners. And I was out on the decking with the dog and I could look out the other opposite direction. And I saw one couple sat in their front garden, um, tables and chairs and they had flags. And they were obviously having something to eat and drink in the, in the front garden. And it was raining. Bless him. He sat under his umbrella. It was freezing cold. Oh. But I didn't see anybody else. This was at about four o'clock on Friday. Didn't see anybody else. But then at about 
eight o'clock, nine o'clock, I could hear a load of singing going on. But I don't know where it was coming from. I couldn't see. I was looking out all my doors and windows and I couldn't see where this noise was coming from. So, a friend of hers, of ours, um, Danielle Louise Thomas, she's called, she's a singer from Liverpool. Mm. She's friends of friends of my parents that's how I know I've known her since she was very young um and she's an operatic mezzo soprano um before he died bless him Ken Dodd had worked quite closely with her and introduced her to a lot of people to boost her career but her and her boyfriend Ollie had done a VE day concert at home in the evening so I watched that and they did White Cliffs of Dover and we'll meet again and Ollie's he's a trumpet player Hmm. Um, and he's got quite a good voice himself, so he did a couple of swing numbers and uh, they did uh, Glenn Miller in the mood and things like that. So yeah, it was it was quite a nice change. Yeah, I, I did watch a little bit of By Jeeves. Oh, I watched ten minutes of it and turned it off. That was about all I could stand. It was awful. Yeah, dreadful. It wasn't even funny. No. There was no music, really, and what there was was a bit pants, and there wasn't even any comedy. I saw a bit of him in a car. Well, it wasn't a car. It was a, a an armchair with a table sort of fastened to the front and a mm. something else fastened to the back that was a pretendy car, and then he ran over one of his friends, and bingo, I think it was. And, mm. and, I'm, and the comments that were on, just there was one trolley person, troll type person on youtube who just kept going give us cats give us cats give us cats give us cats mm. um and i think somebody in the end muted that person because every musical that's been on they've just been put in the same comment you know like ten thousand times or something. yeah it's just ridiculous um and there's someone else was a, had a bot on there that was making sort of lewd comments that again was very quickly deleted but mm. lots of people were going, well, it's not funny. I don't get the jokes. And it's, it certainly wasn't funny in the way that PG Woodhouse was. No. Yes. So I don't know what he'll put on this week. Hopefully it'll be better. I would really like to see um, something like Whistle Down the Wind or Sunset Boulevard. I haven't seen either of those. And I would quite like him to put one of those two on. Whistle Down the Wind. What's yeah um isn't there a, a film about it like an old it's the one with Haley mills yeah i think it's the same story but i'm not sure it could be oh one. no don't don't want to watch that it's got that song whistle down the wind do, 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 do. That yeah, one. If, if it's anything to do with that story i hated it Absolutely. Well, I don't know. I could be wrong. I know Sunset yeah. Boulevard had um, Glenn Close in it, didn't it? Yeah. Wasn't that about an actress? I think so. As if we'd never said goodbye. And... Blanche Dubois, was that? Or yeah. is that street... No, that streetcar named Desire. What am I? Oh, right. I don't know. I've not, I've not seen it. I, I just know that song. That's the only one I know from it. Um, or Aspects of Love. Do any? I haven't no. seen that one with Michael Ball no. in it. Love, love changes everything. That oh, is that what it's from? That's from yeah. Aspects of Love, yeah. Well, I wouldn't have known that. Oh, well, there you go. And then there's Bombay Nights, okay. which is um, like a... Sounds a bit one. more fun, actually. It, it looks really good, the Bombay Night one. It's... Um, Shuck a luck a baby, shuck a luck a baby, come and shuck a luck a with me. That one, you will know it. It was a really big hit in the charts. It's by the same guy that did Jai Ho. Okay. Yeah. No, yeah, it's, not, it's not. Yeah, it's not ringing any bells. But the no, Jai Ho from um, Slumdog Millionaire. Um, Nicole Scherzinger. Sang it. Oh, I've heard it on the Pussycat Dolls album, but I didn't yeah. know it was from yeah. Slumdog Millionaire. I've never seen it. you never seen Slumdog? It's quite a good movie. Have you no. ever seen Lion? But what, sorry? Lion. No. That, I think, is on Netflix. I would highly recommend that movie. 
it's a um, true story of a poor family in India, the two boys. And the older brother, he's not really very old, but he, he goes out, obviously doing work or whatever at night. And his little three or five year old brother, he was only tiny, I think he was maybe only three, um, went with him. But he was slowing him down and he couldn't earn enough. I don't know what he was doing. I can't remember what he was doing. But anyway, he was slowing him down and he wanted to sleep. So he told him to stay on this bench in the train station and he'd come back for him. Anyway, somehow he ends up on a train and he goes across India and he doesn't know where he comes from. And then obviously in India, you've got all the different languages. So where he ends up, they don't speak his language. Right. He ends up getting um, adopted and everything. It's really, really, really good movie. It's got Nicole Kidman in it. Okay. I would highly recommend that movie. Well, if anybody wants something a bit more fun, um, I would recommend the Hollywood series on Netflix. I love that. I'm gonna when I when I'm into when I've got enough concentration to watch something, that's top of my list. Yeah, I thoroughly enjoyed that. Uh, oh, three rows to go and then cast off. Cool. I know how marvellous is that. It's brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Well, I think I'm going to have a bath and something to eat before listening to Bojo tonight. Yeah, I went and had a shower and washed my hair and you know, sort of um, put cream on any of the little dry bits on my feet and trimmed my toenails and sorted out any fur that was where it shouldn't be. Mm -hmm. <laughs> did all, all of that sort of personal grooming stuff today and did my eyebrows a little bit. I probably have to have another attack at them tomorrow. Oh, I know, a nightmare. It, 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 on this one, just in sort of the start of the eyebrow was there's sort of a stack of white hairs it looks like a little white stripe oh no <laughs> distinguished yeah it's only me could get a malon streak in my eyebrow <laughs> i would I quite like one in the rest of my hair <laughs> i'm getting one here i did my legs when did i do my legs friday because where it's been quite warm, I was starting to think about going out running in my shorts. Right. But it's turned really cold again, so I think I needn't have bothered. I can stay in my three quarters. I was doing the strategic, just, you know, sort the bottom of bit of your legs out and not worry about the rest of it. Yeah, I'm going to plait the rest. It'll be fine. You need it. It's there for a reason. To keep you warm. Yeah, definitely. Oh, yes. I still haven't so, put the summer weight duvet on. I think it may be another month before I do that. And I find my summer weight is 10.5 tog. I don't go below that. I wouldn't on my own. I would if, when Phil's home, I put a lighter one on. But only because it's not worth having a heavier one on and in moaning. Yeah. All I get is, oh, did you sleep a wink last night? Flipping up. <laughs> Whatever. So would you be able to get work back at home? Um, I don't know. I don't think so. He's quite highly specialised, to be honest. Mm, that's the difficulty, isn't it? Um, so he painted himself into a corner with his industry background, and it you get to the point where people don't want to put you into anything else because they think you won't stay. But the reality is, if you want to work in an area because that's where you live, then of course you'll stay. <laughs> you never yeah. ask like questions about people's motivation. To be honest, I think because he's going to be 58 this year. Right. He's, um, and he's been looking forward to retiring at 60. I think it would just be a case of retire. Mm. I suppose it depends what difference it makes to his pension, though, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, I mean, obviously, it would make a difference. And we would probably have to move. We'd probably have to sell the house and get something smaller. But so be it. It's fine. You can put the kids in a shed. They're, they're old. Well, I mean, this is a spare room that I'm sitting in. I don't need a spare room. Mm. We've got two reception rooms downstairs, one 
set out as a gym with a treadmill in it. We don't need that second room. We've got a garage that's just used to store everything in. We don't need a garage. There are yeah. plenty of things that we could cut down on. And, and I would rather do that than have to live the next two and a half years. Yeah, just miserable. Yeah, yeah it's just not worth it. Because unfortunately, my sister's husband died two years ago from bladder cancer. And he wasn't very old. And my sister's not very old. She is going to be 50 this year. And I've always said, you know, I, my biggest fear is something like that happening, that we just wait and wait and wait and wait and wait. And then there's something like that happens. What's the point of waiting? Yeah, Mike puts himself under a lot of pressure because he wants to be able to sort of stop at 60 and not have the worry and just have everything in place. And of course, it's rapidly approaching. Um, and he panics like mad about it. But um, I think, well, either it'll work or it won't. But whatever happens, we'll, you know, we'll figure it out. Yeah, you, you cope, you adapt. Things might not be how you wanted them to be, but you then decide what can I live with and what can't I live with? And I've already told him I can't live with that. Yeah. You know, because when I met him, he worked up the road and he went to work every morning and he came home every evening and we had every weekend together and it was a normal life. And then he took that job and I begged him not to take it, but he did. And I've put up with quite a lot over the last 20 odd years. And I just think that that's one step too far. It's mm. not what I signed up for. Well, so, you can do what works for you as a couple. Yeah. Uh, no, I mean, I've always said with Mike and I, it's quite unconventional compared to a lot of people, but it works for us. And I'm not prepared to take anybody else's template of, of what they think is right. You do what's no. right relationship exactly what makes you happy so are we going to see any more baby things being cast on or for me um i have cast on some mittens but um like i said i haven't really got the concentration at the minute yeah i've got a couple of things that need writing up so i did actually do a bit of work today for the first time in about a week mm -hmm um small steps cleared out my emails went on ravelry and replied to um some messages and things and just a, just a little bit of work nothing major just yeah clearing stuff out it's getting back into the habit of it isn't it it's strange how you get out of the habit quickly in a week yeah it doesn't take much does it no <laughs> So, um, yeah, so I feel quite pleased that I did. I've done everything on my list. Mm. It was only a small list today. I kept it small on purpose. Um, I'll add an extra couple of bits tomorrow. Um, because obviously, you know, the ones that I did today took a while. There won't be loads of messages to answer tomorrow and Ravelry and stuff like that. Yeah. So I'll be able to have more in and just take it from there. Maybe get a chance to do some pattern writing tomorrow. Yeah, well, that's good. Yeah. Well, just... it doesn't look like I'd be going anywhere next week anyway. So it doesn't, does it? I'll, unless I do a click and collect, I'll have to see. If I can get a delivery, that'd be much better. But if, if I can click and collect, that's fine. Yeah. I, I don't mind having the 10 o'clock at night deliveries and things like that that other people won't have. Yeah, I don't like having them that late. It's not my favourite, but if it's the difference between, because uh, all the delivery prices have gone up, if it's the difference between paying, say, eight quid for a premium morning delivery and thinking, well, I could have more shopping or it'll go towards petrol once we're all back to work and I've got to take him to college, then I'll put up with staying up late for one evening to do that. And yeah. I suppose the logical time to do that will be Tuesday night. Because I'm up anyway, because we're doing our live chat thing, and it's not much extra to stay up. No, <laughs> I'll not finish not. this leave. <laughs> Yay! Where's that? Hurrah, and hurrah! Look at that! Hurrah! 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 I know what a show off, eh? So buttons and waving in ends now. So, 
that would be uh, a job for later then, will it? I might weave in the ends tonight. I'll have to find the little buttons, but yeah. Are you back again? And less than two balls of yarn. Perfect. Yeah. And that's what's left of the other one in the second size. So 100 grams would definitely do a, a large premium, probably a three month cardigan. Mm -hmm. I'll have to work out the yardage on that and put it into my stitchy calculator, my bob. Yeah. You uji my flip or you watch my call it. Mm. Yeah, I've got, I could say it's all very clever, but it's just a really cranky old copy of Sweater Wizard. Um, but you put in the measurements of the garment you want to make, and you gauge and it calculates the yardage with a little fudge factor. Cool. Go out your fudge factor. And that works really well. Uh, it's never let me down yet, put it that way. But. I think there's a song in that as well. There probably is. I just feel like I to... Never let me down. Yes, hands. <laughs> Give you up. Never gonna let you down. <laughs> oh, is Anne with us? Uh, I don't think so. Can't see. Oh, she must be in the group. All right. Anna. Reading one of the posts, I think it's the um, the Jane Austen one. All oh, right. I think as people get round to it, that's going to be really popular because it's there's got group chat and stuff like that. <laughs> it's very clever. It must have been quite time consuming for whoever put it together. He's <laughs> yeah. never me. Yeah, Marcus, come over to see what all the fuss is. She's probably heard oh, it. Can you hear out her? What is that aesthetic noise? Is there a poor doggy in the background that nobody loves him? Oh my goodness. Poor boy. Oh. Mummy, take you to get your din dins. <laughs> no, not you. Oh, sorry. Did I say the word? No, somebody is trying to now climb on a table to get on my lap. <laughs> I think I've just wound Who's everybody that? up. <laughs> no, they're looking at the door thinking that it's Grampy now and it's not Grampy. It's not here. Grampy Aww. probably will be here this year. Oh, Thanks, but there you are. Poor doggies. Yeah. We upset them all the time, don't we? Oh, no. Neglectful owners. Right, time to go and feed puppies and yeah. I'll have dinner on because apparently I've got things to cook for. I make a lentil soup this morning. Ooh. Yeah, my Granny Ray's recipe, which involves all the vegetables from the bottom of the fridge that won't use them. She's very technical, my Granny Ray, to it. Use it all up, wang that in with some lentils and then boil it till the lentils go pulpy. Uh, and then not a fan of that, that small stock and then take off any sort of impurities and scum on the top of the liquid. Yeah. Mm. Uh, and then she would do hers with a ham bone and right. nice ham. Well, I just had a pack of ham that was open and the last third wanted using by tomorrow. So I sliced it up into tiny bits and wound that in the soup and it was so good. And I had three bowls of it. <laughs> it's all gone now. <laughs> well you know if it's good then it's good isn't it well, as far as slimmy world's concerned that's fine because it was all free food it was there was lots of vegetables in it there was carrot celery um what else was the onion red onion white onion some red peppers now oddments out of the fridge really that just needed using cool that's good right go and feed arthur because he's yeah, I'm gonna... tired it's yeah, crying. Oh, bless him. Right, so we'll see you next time we're on. I don't know. Be on again. Um, soon. Yeah, not Monday, probably Tuesday. Yeah, probably Tuesday. Yeah. Right.